Uh, what we're going to do today with this buck my buddy Brian killed yesterday afternoon. It's still in his hide. None of the deer check-in stations are open on Thanksgiving Day. So he had to wait till this morning to check it in. And it still had to have its hide on. So this deer's pretty cold. It's 35 degrees right now. Got down to about 25 last night. And he had this good and washed out and ribs split and propped open. So it cooled out good. Um, what we're going to do is this rack on here. Uh, being his first deer, we're going to get this rack out of here in one piece. And I'll show you guys how we're going to do that. Over here I got a hacksaw. Or check. Make sure that hacksaw is razor sharp. I don't want to catch any guff over that. <laughs> first thing we're going to do is make a cut straight in across his forehead. You see these rosettes right here. We want to go just down underneath those. Okay, we got that cut back behind here. So it's back behind base of the antlers. I'm gonna get this back here and get his ears back. Now we want to go straight down. We're gonna make a wedge there. There we go. Pop that loose. Grab my knife here. Little tabs of skin. That's how that comes out. I mean, clean that brain out. Skin that, skin that hide off there. If I wanted to brain tan this hide, be a real good way to get it out right there but it's got his first deer rack we can mount this any way you want or you know make a knife handle or whatever out of it all right guys we got a rack out we're gonna spin this buck around here we're gonna hoist him up you look on the back of his legs he's got this big tendon right here this skin in between I'm just gonna take find out take our knife make a little split like that so we got a place to hook him you look on this leg if I can flip him over here this leg has been broke somebody had shot this deer previous to Brian and by the looks of the wound I would say it wasn't too long before Brian got him, but that tendon's a little broke, the bone's broke, so we're going to come up here where we think we can get a bite of it, just poke a hole. And what I got up here, block and tackle in the tree, this thing I made myself, you can buy them, it's called a gambrel, I'll pull that down. hook this buck like that got him hooked we can hoist him up in the tree Let's tie him off. I 
let go of him slow. Now he's hanging so we can skin him. Get this truck out of the way. Get my stuff around here and we'll get this skinned out. All right guys, let's talk a little bit about what I got here to do the job with. First, I have my three personal knives. More clipper, my Pathfinder knife, and the big Mora. I figure the smaller one, this would be pretty good for boning in between the ribs and stuff like that. My Pathfinder blade, is all around knife, we use that to skin with and stuff. This larger Mora, I figured uh, we use this to cut our steaks and things like that. Also have my sharpening kit with me. Brought a bucket to throw our uh, burger meat into. Have a hacksaw for cutting some bone. We got us a set of saw horses, piece of plywood, and a brand new piece of plastic over it to keep the meat clean. I brought some rubber surgical gloves. Don't really need them, but it's kind of chilly out here. Keep my hands a little warm and keep me from having to wash my hands so much. So, that, let's uh, get to this buck here. The way I like to do start is come in here, it's under the skin. Come up. If you do this deer when skinning when he's when he's uh, warm, hide comes off really easy. Still ain't too bad when it's cold, but just a little tougher. get it started like that, sometimes you just grab it, pull it, work out white membrane, down. Try to be careful not nick the hide and not take too much meat with it either. Get the front leg done on one side, so come up here and get this deer to help me here. Come under there. Under the skin, split him up. If you guys can see this or not, where this deer had a wounded leg, you see this yellow, that meat, this bottom part of this leg might not be any good. We're just going to take our time and work this down. Get that leg loose. Work this leg loose a little more. Boy, this deer's cold. My hands are freezing already.
I said, when this deer is warm, probably could just grab this and yanked it off. But since it's cold, that fat adheres it pretty good. I'll get this other side, just like this side, and then we're going to swing around and we'll do the back and do it straight off. So I'll get the other side and we'll get back here. All right, guys, I got the legs worked out there and around to the back. Uh, I'd take a pause there to warm up my hands. They got so daggone cold, I couldn't feel what I was doing. End up nicking the hide. But get around here to the tail. You see this joint in the tailbone right there? That's real soft. You can just pop it, pop it right off. Just get this and start working loose. Work it right down just like that. I'm lay this hide down, first side down. I'm getting a little, little meat there on the hide. I'll try not to do that, but like I said this isn't a picture of perfection, and I'm not a professional deer skinner here, so. it down like that to his head. And what I do is come around here. Take this hide off. If we weren't keeping the hide, we could have just cut that head off and uh, some people toss the whole thing. What come up here? One leg. legs come down here to the base of the neck There's his head. So, I got him skinned out. Take my knife and see how much of this fat we can get off. Get a garden hose out and wash him up, get the hair off of him or whatever. We might have got some dirt on him or whatever. So, basically, like I said, guys, ain't the picture of perfection, and I ain't no professional, but we got it done. All right, guys, we're back. We got the deer skinned, and I took this more knife. It's real flat and thin, and I went around, and I worked, you know, like my blade flat and worked a bunch of that fat off the meat. I was just going to cut it up into workable pieces so we can work on it on the table. You come in here, see his front leg opens up like that, you come back to about there. Get under, if you see that, where his bone is there. And 
take that front leg right off. There's one front quarter. Put that on our clean table there. You guys see this side? It's the exit wound. The big blood clot and stuff. So some of that rib meat there might not be any good. I'm not sure. I'll we'll see what we can get. Nothing else but to make some make some burger meat. There's our other front quarter. Now we're going to do this. Brian decided he wanted uh, tenderloins instead of pork chops. But let me turn this deer around for you guys here. If we're going to do chops. We do is cut this and then come down the side of the back or the center of the backbone and then come down here to the edge and cut them ribs off and cut in between the ribs and make chops but to get these back straps out take this flap of meat cut it down around here kind of follow that down to the rib there take that piece of belly meat off that would make burger what we do, you see the line we got run down the spine. We we'll cut straight down that spine, clear down to the ribs. Cut this across. Get that edge worked loose. We'll work that right down tops of them rib bones. We'll try to work that close to the bone so you get all the meat. Cut that off right there at the bottom of the neck roast. As you see that trim up the fat some guys were asking about making sinew it's this tendon or material that runs up and down the spine we can peel that off and dry that out and that'll make our sinew that's one solid chunk of meat right there alright guys we did the same thing to both sides got them back straps out of there see how much meat that was just by how much is missing come down here this neck roast out of here. You see this? If I pick it up on camera, but there's a line that muscle separates there. Just kind of work at around that spine. Work it on around there. Come out one big roast. We can split that in half or uh, cube it up. Or if you don't want that roast, you can just put it in your burger. You got that out. If you look in here, there's two pieces of meat right here. Just basically the back side of the back straps. Some people call this the fish. Well, if we get it out of here, it kind of looks like a fish. Some people call that the butcher steak because back in the old days, the butcher would keep that steak as part of his payment. There's the other one. Uh, 
Now, the thing to do with this would be, probably not going to show all of it on camera, but if we get this cut off, we can get this on the table, just sit here and take your knife and bone out all this little meat on here, and that'll be going to the burger pile. So, we got that done. Uh, all this meat off the neck, we'll bone that out, get that into the burger. For now, take my saw right here at the base. Get me a good place to hold on to this. Put this on the table so we can bone that meat out and get all this blood clot out of there from the exit wound. See all this little rib meat and stuff. Well, that's still good meat. We can bone that out and grind it into burger or sausage. Just keep walking in front of the camera. Sorry about that, guys. Like, it's a little bit of meat here and here. It's on the bottom of the neck. We can cut that off and burger. No reason to waste any of it. Now we're back to these. Got our hams hanging up here. We'll cut these down. There's like a place there it wants to split. through the meat there. Take our saw. Split that bone in half. We got our two hindquarters. That's where our roasting steaks live. So basically we got it quartered up. Now the trick is if you're by yourself, get this off here without this gambrel swinging. What we'll do is get a good grip on this. Work one off. Let my gambrel go a little bit. I bent them ends up, so when it's hanging like that, it's still hang. But, got a big hind quarter of meat. Cut this back leg off, and uh, cut us some steaks and stuff. All right, guys, we've got our quarters here. Got a hind quarter. Flip that up on edge, you can feel that hip where we split it. What I do is I kind of feel where that edge of that is. I take and follow that bone down. To the leg bone. I lay him down. I find his leg bone. I cut into it and follow it. Kind of work it around that bone. Get, get the meat off. Come out that big chunk of meat. And that meat on the front. Come down the back side of that bone. his knee pop that off I find the front of that hip cut straight in 
flip it back over. Back down to his knee. Got them two big chunks of meat. This little meat strip I left here on the top. Cut that off. It goes in the burger bucket. These little pieces of meat here. I just trim them off with my knife. Much as I can. It goes in the burger. Try to work around this bone. much of that off there as we can. This lower leg meat here, <coughs> excuse me, I like to cut down a little bone. Just work that off the bone. into the burger bucket. Bone all this little meat. This meat on this lower section of the leg's got tons of little tendons and stuff running through it, so I've always thought it was better to grind that up just because it's Try to make anything else out of it, it's just kind of tough. I'm going to work all this meat off here. Basically, I already got the main good stuff off there, but I don't want to waste any of this meat either. I'll make good uh, hamburger if you like to make sausage. But basically, we got everything off there. We'll spend a little more time and get the rest of that meat off. All right, guys, we got this piece of meat that was on his front part of his leg. We're going to make that a roast. And for the size of Brian's family... We're just going to make two out of this, so we'll just gauge it about half there and cut it in half. Basically, a nice roast can give us some uh, taters and carrots and onions right there. This main chunk of meat here, this is where the steaks live. The way I've done this before is cut that piece off so we kind of get it to a shape I just take my knife we'll straighten out this one end so that's what we got just decide how thick we want our steaks slice that down Basically, we got a couple fat steaks there. Now, if you guys can't tell, I'm no uh, professional deer butcher by any means. Uh, but the point of this is, 
we were in a self-reliant situation, we know we can get this meat usable. Pretty good pieces. Clean. It doesn't have to look like it come out of the grocery store, but cut that off. I got these little pieces here. I'll strip off there. I'll work on that a little bit later, guys, but this big tendon that we had that deer hanging by, I'll get this little bit of meat off of that. I'm going to hang that up and let it dry out. You can see how fibrous that is? Get that dried out. We can take, lay it down on a log and take another baton, you know, and just beat that, and that'll break down into fibers, and we can make sinew out of that. I'm going to set that off to the side. This piece worked down. I think we can get one more decent stink out of that. Yeah, not too bad. This piece here, nice little stew roast. Little burger meat. We got the front quarter. A little blood clot there still from her where the bullet passed through. See this has got a big fat piece in it here. Take that off for now, set it aside, but there's some meat on there. We can bone off that big slab of fat and Throwing our burger. But get that to peel off one piece, but it ain't gonna happen. Anyways, we'll work on that while we're doing our boning our rib cage out. I look at this and just kind of separate my muscle groups. You see how this bone comes up to there and down? All I can do is take my knife, come in at that elbow. Come straight down. Come back here at the shoulder blade. And fall that bone around. Trim that fat up a little bit. Get to quit rolling around on me. There we got another nice roast. The rest of this meat on here. I'm just gonna bone out close to that, close so I can get her down to that bone. You see that bone? There's a lot of tendons and stuff in here. We're gonna try to keep that out of our burger, but this lower leg, you guys can see all these tendons that run up and down here. We can get that stripped off our meat and get these little strips, and we'll grind that too. Uh, little parts like this. Some blood clot stuff. Kind of just take the edge of your knife and work that off. Anyways, guys, we got no pile of roasting steak so far off a couple quarters. We got our uh, rib cage yet to bone out our neck. Uh, got back straps. Our neck roast, our tenderloin, uh, some more meat we can bone off these legs. Uh, we can take these bones and lay them out the edge of the woods and let them dry out, and then we'll have all these bones we can use to make some primitive tools out of or whatever. We've got a really nice hide. Uh, like I said, we're not professionals at this by any means. Uh, never claimed to be. I think you'd have to do it a lot to be really good at it uh, but the point is we got it done we got some meat to go in the freezer we didn't pay anybody we did it ourselves and uh, I guess with that said uh, we'll finish this up uh, you guys can pretty much figure out what you got to do to get that 
meat off the bone. It'd just be a lot of tedious uh, picking between the ribs and stuff. So, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, uh, this has been Steve Davis. Uh, thanks for your reviews, and I really thank you guys for all your support you showed me in the past week or so. So, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.